Hi, I'm Patu from Freepin Cal and in this video I want to talk about a common mistake that investors do when they compare one mutual fund with another or uh, an exchange traded fund with the corresponding index fund. Please stop assuming that uh, uh, an ETF which has got a lower expense ratio than an index fund will do better or will give you more returns than the index fund. This is complete uh, ignorance of how a ETF works. Please don't make, uh, don't assume such things before you actually compare the return of a ETF and the return of a uh, index fund. I'm going to show you evidence. I have actually shown these graphs uh, in a video where I talked about what is the best way to invest in the Nifty Next 50. Uh, so I'll repeat this in this context. So these are um, 659.3 year returns of the nifty junior b's etf versus the icici nifty next 50 index fund the direct plan growth option um, we are comparing the nav of the etf with the obviously the nav of the uh, index fund and you can see that in the top panel that the index fund has bet the etf 646 out of 659 times that is 98 percent of the time and if in terms of the risk, you can see that the uh, Nifty uh, index fund, Nifty Next 50 index fund has, is, is lower. The blue line is lower than the red line, which means that the ICICI index fund has got a slightly lower volatility than the uh, Nifty uh, Junior B's ETF. Of course, the difference in volatility is not too much. The difference in return is not too much. But the point I'm trying to make is it is incorrect to assume that just because the ETF has got lower expense ratio, it will produce a return higher than the index fund. That's the point I'm trying to make, which is clearly not wrong, uh, which is clearly not the case when you compare NAV. Um, currently, if you look at the expense ratio of both of these, there is almost a 0.5% difference approximately 0.5% difference of course this could have changed in the past but in any case the index fund would always have the higher expense ratio that is for sure by just by design and construction of the uh, product now there are two things about the ETF that people fail to uh, recognize simply because data is not available please recognize that the tracking error of a ETF is based on the NAV of the ETF. Now the NAV of the ETF, how closely it matches with the uh, NAV of the index or the price movements in the index is a measure of how well the fund manager is able to track the index of the ETF underlying ETF unit. But please recognize that the return in the hand of the investor is not the NAV. It, it is not based on the NAV. It is based on the price that is determined in the secondary market by the pool of all unit holders uh, invested in the ETF, right? Therefore, you should be comparing the price of the, uh, you should be using the price information of the ETF for calculating returns. People do not do it because the portals do not report it. There are ways to extract it. I have done this. I have got this data from value research. So. I, I am able to compare the uh, uh, Nifty Junior B's with Nifty Next 50 ETF price data versus the NAV of the uh, ICICI index fund. When, when you do this, this 98% outperformance falls to 67%. So there's a difference. That's very important. So when you use the price data, which is actually the return that you will get, you should be measuring return in terms of the price you buy and sell the ETF unit. Uh, the outperformance is not as much still the index fund beats the ETF. This is very important and please recognize when you use the price data, the volatility becomes higher. The gap between the volatility, volatility becomes higher. This is because of the market forces. And this is the actual return and risk that you should be comparing uh, when you are uh, comparing the index fund with the ETF. Please recognize that. Of course, um, there can be significant there can be a period in which the price and the NAV of the ETF can differ significantly uh, over short periods of time I have the uh, you can see the link in the description box for this data for the Nifty Junior B's ETF 
and uh, for this reason i i keep saying stop using uh, etf just by index funds you're not going to lose anything don't assume that just because you are paying more uh, expense fees you're going to get, you're going to be uh, short changed and you're going to get a lesser return that is clearly not the case people talk through their hat many of these advisors they don't know what they are saying they they don't actually look at the data before they speak so don't follow them blindly and assume uh, that uh, higher expense ratio is bad so that's our three years let's repeat this exercise over four years now you have uh, 415 four-year data points this is a comparison of the NAV of the ETF versus the NAV of the ICICI index fund again the index fund has bet the ETF uh, 397 out of 415 times but that uh, margin becomes lower when you use the price data of the ETF it becomes it falls to 78 percent but still the index fund is better but notice the gap between the again the gap between the volatility uh, lines increases because the price is much more volatile than the NAV of the ETF. The price of the ETF is much more volatile because of the market forces and the market force is a very short market. That's the reason why it's more volatile. The number of players involved is very less. That's the reason why it's volatile. Now, if you repeat this over five years, you only have 170 data points, but over all those 170 uh, uh, returns, five year returns, the index bet the ETF when you use the NAV of the ETF and if you use the price of the ETF, it is still an impressive 73% that the index is bet. So that is the singular message I wanted to convey in this video. Do not make the mistake of assuming that just because the ETF has got lower expense ratio, it is better than the index fund in terms of how much return it will give. It is wrong because all the returns of ETF that you see in all these star rating portals are based on the NAV. That tracking error is based on the NAV. It is completely wrong. If you use the tracking error, if you calculate the tracking error uh, using the price of the ETF, the uh, value will be significantly higher as I've shown in the link below. Please uh, use the proper data to make comparison. Don't sit down and, uh, and dream about these things and assume uh, and talk through your hat. And always remember, ETFs can all, the ETFs can declare dividends. And that these dividends can be passed on to the unit holders. They need not always be reinvested back. And the reason why you have the tracking error is the uh, reinvestment of dividends. If it happens, does not happen immediately. It can happen over a period of time. Uh, it can happen within a quarter even. Uh, you can see the wordings of the junior B C T F uh, below. So uh, that's the reason why the tracking errors in the in the price can also grow go up. So for the for the uh, comparison that you see in the previous charts. I have uh, only taken the time frame after the last dividend was declared in the uh, Nifty Junior B's ETF. In the last uh, five, six years, no dividends have been declared. So this comparison uh, uh, makes sense. But if you want to compare uh, any ETF with the index fund, check when the last dividend was uh, declared and use the time frame after that. And please recognize if the price dip, price to nav NAV, uh, price to nav uh, difference in the ETF is not too much, then you can quickly use the NAV for uh, NAV of the ETF for comparing with the index fund. But if the price to nav difference of the ETF is high, do not even bother comparing. Just outright throw out the ETF and stick the index fund. In my opinion, you should not even be comparing. Just stick with the index fund. Buy and sell units directly from the AMC. Don't get into this business of buying um, and selling in the secondary market. So that's what I wanted to convey in this video. And uh, I'm happy to announce that uh, uh, Freefin Cal YouTube channel has now <coughs> 10,000 subscribers. Um, there, are, there are some plans I have in the summer. I'll talk about uh, that in the next video. Thank you as always for watching. Uh, catch you again later. Bye-bye.